Hello once again, Niner Faithful, and welcome back to another episode of 49ers Playbook on the channel that's trying to answer the whys and hows of the game. First, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. You are truly the ones supporting the channel and making this possible. Your investment in the channel has been much appreciated, and if you'd like to support the channel in any way, I'll have links for that below. We have a goal of building a dedicated studio office space. These videos do take a lot of time away from my family, and we want to make even more great content for the greatest fan base in the world. Your support makes this content possible. Also, please like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already. It's a free way to support the channel. But the Cowboys came into Levi's Stadium with one of the highest scoring offenses in the league and mustered only 10 points. Having four turnovers and finding out they were playing a different class of team in the 49ers. The defense was able to shut down the run, totally negate CeeDee Lamb and frustrate Dak Prescott all game long. So let's jump to the film and see how Steve Wilkes and company dominated the Cowboys. You're watching Johnny Dell's Football Academy. Right from the opening play, the defensive line set the tone for how the game would go. The Cowboys are trying to run a center lead here. They're trying to attack the wide nine of the 49ers by using angles on Farrell and Hargrave, then pull the center around on Hafunga. Then they'll have a scoop block on the backside, while Martin looks to get up on Greenlaw and then use quarterback option to try and hold Bosa. It's not bad design. It accounts for everyone on the defensive side. But at the snap, Farrell does a great job setting the edge and Hargrave is just gonna beat his man. Hargrave and Farrell stuffing the point of attack allows Bosa to run down the play from the backside. On the second play of the game, we'll see the impact of the stellar linebackers from San Francisco. This is a different look for the 49ers. We didn't see this coverage ran like this with D'Amico Ryans. This is something Wilkes brought with him. It's a fire zone, but your outside corners are in press man. They're bringing Gibson on a blitz, and the two outside guys, Greenlaw and Burks, are playing carry, match, deliver. They'll carry any vertical in their area to a depth before handing off to Havunga, match anything out breaking, and deliver anything in breaking to Warner. The Cowboys come with a run fake and are trying to hit the tight end on a corner route, but you see how Warner carries him vertically while Greenlaw looks to match the out breaking route. Dak tries to lead his tight end away from Greenlaw and can't make the tight window throw. You can see how the presence of both linebackers and coverage affected the throw and it's incomplete. We then force another incomplete pass for Dallas's first three and out of the night. We're coming with heavy pressure here and again the inside guys Gibson and Oliver are going to in out Lamb. Oliver will carry and deliver to Gibson if he goes inside, and Oliver will take him if he goes outside. This is a variation on a play the Cowboys tried to hit against us last year in the playoffs and Dak threw a pick. They ran two deep comeback routes and Lamb on a deep over route. Here, Lamb will run a deep over route and they're going with two fades. The in-out coverage takes away Lamb and then Dak misses the throw. If we take it back, I want to highlight Lenore here. He gets physical at the line and watch him squeeze the route to the boundary. He's using it as a help defender, and he stays in perfect position on the receiver, leaving no room for Dak to get the ball in. Back on defense, so this is the fourth play of the game and the fourth play I'm showing. You're seeing why I split the videos this week but we're going to see the talent level of the linebackers pop again. We're in cover one lurk. The Cowboys are running a spacing concept with a short curl paired with the flat route. 
This can work against man or zone. In man, it creates rub or pick action. As the play goes, you'll see how the short curl creates a pick action for Greenlaw to have to run over. But the speed, closing, and tackling is out of bounds, no pun intended, as he closes on the flat route and makes a tackle for a loss. The Cowboys had a play that by all means should work, but it gets negated by star talent and speed by Greenlaw. We then get a sack from Bosa on third down. The Cowboys spread out and were in cover one lurk. I'm pretty sure there's a wrong route here because Dallas comes with three slants to the three receiver side. Normally you'd see two slants and a flat route for a dragon plus lion, but we disrupt the receivers off the line and as Dak is looking to hit one of the slants, Fred is going to jump Dak's eyes. And with a flash from Warner, Dak pulls it down, which lets Bosa get home. That's good coverage and good pass rush. Back on defense, we're going to see Fred Warner force the first turner over the game for Dallas. The dude is an alien. There's no other explanation. Dallas is coming with a G lead, and Biotic gets up on Warner, but watch Fred humiliate the block, then run down the ball carrier and force the fumble. Sometimes there's no words but just to let the play speak for itself. Then after the McCaffrey fumble, we get perfect coverage by Mooney Ward. We're in cover three zone here, and I'm really surprised Dak even took this shot. Ward has a cushion, and he's going to just have a fade route. It's not a double move, just a pure fade. Ward stays in the receiver's hip pocket and turns and locates the ball. It's really heads up that as he's covering the throw, he tucks his outside arm in to not interfere with the receiver and uses that long arm to reach up and defend the pass. Next, you're going to see one of the greatest plays from a linebacker, period. So if you watched my episode on the defense last week, I talked about one play the team had struggled defending in man coverage, and it was the mesh concept. Here's a clip from last week. All right, then we're gonna see the first not so good. Again, there's this idea that we didn't play press man. Well, it's third down and we're in press man, and the Cardinals are going to come with the old mesh concept. It's been used to beat press man for decades now, and you see why. Oliver gets picked on the cross traffic and we give up a completion for a first down. If you're going to press on these, you better be able to jam that receiver hard and disrupt the timing on this. We've been susceptible to these types of plays in man. So what do the Cowboys run here on third and short seeing the man coverage? A mesh concept. The difference is Fred Warner is going to blow this play up. I cannot wrap my head around how Fred sees this, but he's going to feel the shallow crossers, and remember, contact is allowed within the first five yards. Fred disrupts both shallow crossing routes, then tracks Dak's eyes and undercuts CD Lamb's route, forcing Dak to pull the ball. Then follows him down the line to the open field and goes and makes a sack on Prescott. I just, I, I don't know. This man is not real. Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the league, and it's not even close. Now let's take a look at Fred in the run game. Dallas is running in the inside zone and they're going to try and get up on Fred with a tight end. And that's not a good matchup. Watch Fred take that blocker on and the violence with which he meets the block and then gets on the tackle. And then yet another example of how freakishly good these linebackers are. Tony Dungy said before the game that Dre Greenlaw reminded him of a linebacker he had in Tampa, Derek Brooks. So let's dive into exactly what he meant. Here we're showing a single high pre-snap and the Cowboys have a verticals concept dialed up. 
Just before the snap, you'll see Gibson drop back and will be in Tampa 2 zone. Tampa 2 gets its name from Tony Dungy creating it in Tampa Bay. It varies from cover 2 zone in that the safeties widen more than normal to take away shots down the sideline. But with the middle of the field more exposed, the mic is responsible for carrying the deepest route down the middle of the field, usually from the number 3 receiver. This means that the weakness of the Tampa 2 is the short middle of the field where the mic would have otherwise been. This puts a lot of stress on your weak side or will linebackers. They will often be the guy who then has to clean up all the short stuff over the middle. That was Derek Brooks in Tampa. At the snap, Dak wants the seam route with Jalen Tolbert, a 195 pound wide receiver running down the seam with Fred Warner tasked with matching. Fred is stride for stride with him. So he's forced to check down to the short underneath and watch Dre Greenlaw clean it up. That looks exactly how Derek Brooks used to clean up these plays in Tampa back in the day. The one thing that stands out with this team though is that everyone plays hard, everyone rallies to the ball, everyone plays 100 miles an hour each and every play. Here the Cowboys are running the toss crack play, they'll crack down on Farrell and then pull a tackle and have a fullback lead around. Watch Oren Burks take off like he shot out of a cannon to run this play down, force the cutback to your 33 year old safety Gibson. And even though Burks made this play, he celebrates giving credit to Gibson. I mean, come on y'all, how do you not love this team? Then I want to come back to this Derek Brooks comparison because Greenlaw is getting a little overshadowed by Fred Warner, which I totally understand, but Dre has been playing out of his mind. We're in Tampa 2 again and Dallas is trying to work a triangle stretch to high-low Greenlaw in this Tampa 2. They're going to run a deep out which will draw Warner and Oliver and then have a hook over the middle with a short curl by the running back. Greenlaw sits on the hook route, forcing Dak to check it down, and when he does, drives on the running back with violence and forces an incomplete pass. Not even joking here, this is exactly what Derrick Brooks did in Tampa. Next, right before the half, we're going to again see the things that Fred Warner does that just set him apart in the league. We're showing a press man look with single safety pre-snap. Post-snap, we shift into Tampa 2 zone. I love the disguise by Wilkes. Make the quarterback work post-snap. But this means you have Fred Warner matching Brandon Cooks, a guy with a ton of speed down the middle of the field. The disguise throws off Dak and allows the pressure to get there, so he flushes out and tries to heave it down to Cooks, but Fred Warner was there the whole way. Some people said Dak overthrew this, but if he threw it in bounds, Fred was right there. There was nowhere for Dak to put this ball. That's your middle linebacker running down the field with not just any receiver, with Brandon Cooks. Then we see Drake Greenlaw get a sack. They're just playing such great team defense. We're in cover three Mabel here and Gibson is going to do a great job of matching on a crossing route. This is where Dak wants to go with the ball. So even though he escapes the pressure, his throw is taken away and that allows Greenlaw to close. And when he attacks, the dude attacks. All right, so now I wanna talk about the reigning defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa. Dallas is trying to run a G lead and let's watch Bosa here. First, they're trying to block him with a tight end, which just isn't happening. He stands the tight end up. The guard, one of the best in the league, tries to help out and doesn't accomplish anything. Bosa is such a selfless, heady player. He sees the fullback coming out and will reach out an arm and hold the guy up with one arm while he's engaged with the tight end with the other. The guy ends up making contact with three blockers on the play. Slowing down the fullback gives Greenlaw enough time to set a hard edge and then Bosa still gets in on the tackle for a one yard loss. That is what it means when you're the defensive player of the year. There's not enough good words to say about this play from Bosa. Then on third down, let's give some love to the big free agent signing, Javon Hargrave. The Cowboys are trying to run duo here and Hargrave stems inside. The center wants to get to Fred Warner, but can't. They double up on Hargrave and he still splits the double team and makes the tackle for a loss.
Then with the game slipping away, the Cowboys are going to take a shot and lose. We're in press man and they're going to try and go after Lenore. They're trying to run a play action fake, have full max protection, run Lamb on a curl route, and have Cooks on a streak. Dak is going to try and look off Gibson, but it never works, and he figures if you're going to be wrong, be long, well, Gibson stayed steady in the middle of the field, and so he's all over the route and runs it down for a pick. And then again, more alien work from Fred Warner. So we're in cover four and the Cowboys are running a double dig concept. This is gonna put Warner in a horizontal stretch. Dak is reading Fred the whole way here. He thinks he's got him when he sees Fred's hips turned. But come on, how many linebackers can recover like this to flip his hips and drive on the throw, get a hand on it and break up the pass? I'm pretty sure Dak couldn't believe Fred got there. Then Fred gets an interception that guts the Cowboys. We're in a zone blitz that we ran while D'Amico was here and they're going to try and work on Lenore again. He's in press man and they're going to try and hit a slant against him. Lenore has really been solid on the outside. People saying we need a corner, I'm not so sure. I really do like the guys we have. Lenore fights on the route, gets a hand in to knock the ball up, and the alien closes in for a pick. It was really hard picking what to show and what could even be left out of this game. The defense had their best game of the year and absolutely throttled the team that had been scoring over 30 points a game coming in. Fred Warner is leading an absolutely stacked group of talent, and when you look at the 49ers, it's hard to see a team that is more talented on either side of the ball, let alone more talented, period. It was some of the best film to watch on the defense, and I hope it gets you as excited as I am for a big matchup against the Browns. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and go Niners.